Hi. Now, I'm often asked, what is the difference between an equation and an expression? And how should we set out our solutions to problems involving equations and expressions? Well, that's the aim of this particular video. I'm also going to introduce you to this symbol here, which again, I'm often asked about, what does it mean? Well, let's first of all turn our attention to equations. An equation would be something like this. This is a very simple one. x plus 3 equals 4. You should be able to guess what x is. It's just simply 1. And we would normally write, therefore, x equals 1. Now, with something like this, okay, there's a particular value of x that makes this true. Okay, in this case, x equals 1. Whereas, if you're dealing with an expression, I'll give you an example of an expression. Just say the left-hand side of this equation, x plus 3, in other words. Here's another expression. It consists of two terms, just like the one over here, x squared minus 5x. Notice they don't have an equals in them. So this is when we start to use this symbol. That symbol means identical to, we'll just put this down here, it means identical. Or you could say, I suppose, is the same as. Okay, let's just put that, is the same as. That's another way that we could express that. Now, it's got to be handled, it has a slightly different meaning then to what equals means. Because if we take the expression, let's just put this down, we take the expression x plus 3, we could write something that's identical to that or is the same as. If we put that symbol, what is going to be identical to x plus 3? Well, I could make x up, for instance, by doing 2x minus x. That gives me x. And then for the 3, I could write, for instance, plus 2 plus 1. Notice I'm not using an equal sign. x plus 3 was equal to 4. It wasn't identical to 4. It wasn't another way of writing x plus 3. So there's that subtle difference between an equation and an expression. Let's take x squared minus 5x. Let's put and x squared minus 5x. This two-termed expression here. What could you think of that's identical to this? Well, I could write 4x squared, for instance, down here. And then if I was to take off, for instance, 3x squared, that would be the same as saying x squared. And for minus 5x, I could have, for instance, plus 3x minus 8x. An identical expression. Okay, so I hope that gives you, first of all, some idea of how we use this symbol. Now, you will often see people write equals here, but I'm trying to encourage you not to do that, to use the correct symbol. Now, where are we going to meet this? Well, some examples of this, let's just uh, write in examples, are going to be when you have to simplify something. So you're going to get a typical question which might say, simplify, um, what can we have? 5x plus 6 plus 2x plus 4, say. Well, if we're given something like this, Put down your intro as 5x plus 6 plus 2x plus 4. And then try not to write equals, but put is identical to, out on the right here, not underneath, okay? Out to the right. And then what is this identical to? Well, it's going to be 5x and 2x, which is 7x, and 6 and 4, which is plus 10. So an identical expression to this. You're also going to get questions which ask you to factorise something. So suppose you're asked to factorise, say, x squared plus 8x. Then again, 
have an intro which would be x squared plus 8x and then to the right put down another way of writing this it's identical to x bracket x plus 8 where x is a common factor the highest common factor between these two terms so where else might you see expressions which we need to change well you might get something like this which is expand and simplify let's just put that in expand and simplify what could it be it could be say x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 so when you're laying this kind of question out x plus 1 x minus 3 is the intro and then it is identical to a gain out on the right there and if we expand this in the usual way x times x gives us x squared x times minus 3 is minus 3x 1 times x is 1x or just simply x and 1 times minus 3 is minus 3 and then the next identical sign would go directly underneath this other one not over here and then we have x squared and then minus 3x plus x which is minus 2x and then the minus 3 so what I'm suggesting then is that for good layout what we would have let's just put good layout this is what I'm encouraging you to try and do for expressions okay that is for good layout what you're going to have is your expression let's just put that in you've got your expression and then you're going to write to the right of it that it is identical to some other similar expression generally it's going to be simplifying this expression but it might be ex factorizing it might be expanding it and it might be that it has another stage in it so you put your next identical sign underneath that one and write down what it is there and there might be another stage to it okay three stages four stages who knows but you keep writing this identical sign directly underneath so what would I consider as poor layout say well common layouts that uh, I see would be for instance when you're asked to factorize an expression like say x squared plus 2x x is a common factor between these two and then you might see this written now as I said earlier the it's the use of the equal sign is not really that good because we should only use it for equations what I've done here is I've written an identical statement to this so I would certainly want to avoid the equal sign another example of poor layout is when one is asked to expand then say two brackets x plus 1 x minus 3 just the same example that we had up here you'll see this written and then answers underneath written down that this expands to x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3 and then when this is simplified you get x squared minus 2x minus 3 so it's the correct answer but poor layout because there's no linkage let's just put that down in blue no linkage and what do I mean by no linkage well we're not using any symbols to connect these expressions together sometimes you'll see people using equal signs placed here well that's not really that good try and get this kind of layout and avoid the use of equals anyway use an identical sign so this is what I commonly see but uh, as I say try and set your work out like that so that's just a couple of examples there of what I would suggest is poor layout 
Now in exams, you're not going to end up losing marks just because of the layout necessarily, but uh, as mathematicians, we should be trying to aim, I feel, in setting out our work in a clear, logical manner. Okay, so uh, that brings me now to the end of this particular tutorial anyway. And uh, in this series, I've got uh, ways of setting out equations and the use of symbols as well. So you might like to look at that. Um, also, the best place to view all my videos for free is on my website because there's plenty of indexes there and if you're following a particular examination board there's a good chance that I've got the specification listed out for you with links to corresponding videos. So uh, have a look on my website at the tutorials and uh, that is a better place than the YouTube channel. Alright?